Hello everyone, welcome to Titan Web Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about the description in the uh, Salesforce integration. This is one of the most overlooked features and uh, I'll try to explain how important this is. Even though it's optional, um, it's extremely important and I'll show you why. So we're gonna head over to the Salesforce integration. What we have here is a get for a product and we have a push for a lead and a case. And you can see right now that the case has created a new case in Salesforce, which is okay. It, it understands what this thing does. So that's the first thing you would want to do um, is just by viewing it. Right now, it's it's pretty simple because we have just laid in a case. But once your project gets bigger and you're working with a ton of objects and sometimes you're pushing the same objects from different pages, you would want to be able to differentiate between them and the easiest way to do it is just whenever you're on a push or a get give it a description and try and give it uh, a, the best description you can give so for instance in this uh, this uh, instance that will be uh, create create a lead from the home page um, lead form all right so i know it's a lead form i know it's from the, the home page and i know what this does so that's wonderful and i'll show you how important this is in our next steps and the same goes for the get so if i'll head over here and again i have just one get for a product but what if this will be duplicated and let's just duplicate this and now this will do something entirely different. That will pull in products to a different page under a different scenario. Instead of pulling all the products, it will pull just one. Once you click on the uh, on a button on a certain product, it will show you more information, etc. You have to write the description, otherwise you will get lost uh, the more your, pr your project gets bigger. And it will be much easier to debug once you have, if you have issues, it will be a lot easier and I'll show you in just a second why. So I'm just going to add over here and say get products to product catalog page on page load. Since this is what it does, once the page is loaded, then it will get the products to the product to the product catalog page. Um, so get products. And let me show you why this is so important. So once we have all this set up, um, I'll hit close. Let's publish this and I'll launch. And before we head over to the publish site, I'll show you a few reasons why this is important. So let's say I select a form. This is the lead form which runs, runs my push. So if I'll click on the configuration and I'll head over to Salesforce, I can see immediately what this is doing. So I can see I have a pick list pool and I have a, a push and it gives me the description. If I if I had a bunch of other ones, it will just show, if I wouldn't put any description, it will just do lead create. And if you have five of them, you will have no idea what's going on. So this is another great reason to do it. And one of the most important reasons, and the same goes for the, uh, if I'll head over to the product, product catalog page and I'll select this guy and I'll head over to Salesforce. I go to the strip. I see immediately I have a get for the strip, get products, product catalog on page load. That's amazing. Right off the bat, we can see what it's doing, and that's great. All right, so we're at the publish site here, and let's go to the lead and let's create, let's create something. So testing lead creation and let's fill this up put a number in there and an email wonderful select the product all right let's save this now let's head back to our builder and I'll head over to the Salesforce integration and you can see immediately in the integration logs what happened here. So before then I had a different description and you can see HP from push. 
And if that would be empty, and you would have a bunch of lead creates, you wouldn't know which one was running, and in case you have an error, so let's try and simulate an error. So I'll have to Salesforce, and let's let's remove the, in the push, I'll remove the description. Okay, and I'll hit apply, so you know how important this is. So let's say you had a bunch of lead creates here that you don't know what's what. You have like one of them creating from the homepage, a different one from a support page, etc., etc. Everyone is a different uh, push. Right now it's pretty simple because we have just one, but what if, and it always happens when your uh, project gets bigger, you have a bunch of uh, different integrations running. Okay, so I'll hit close. Let's publish this guy and launch it. So I'll try and force it to have an error. I'm just gonna keep the company, uh, let's do fail test, and I'll keep the company empty. And let's put a number in there. And let's select a product and tell us more and I'll hit save. All right, let's take a look at our integration logs. And we see that there is an error here. Required field is missing. Now, you see that the lead create, you have no more data uh, aside from the lead create. And if you had a few lead creates, you wouldn't know which one generated that, the error. This is why it's very, very important to write a description on your push or get what uh, that push or get is doing. 